So next job is one of my beautiful ATAG boilers, ATAG, ATAG. One day I will learn how to say it properly. They have no heating, no hot water. Actually, I don't think they've tested the heating. Um, but yeah, definitely no hot water. So we're gonna see it's a system boiler. So hopefully it is a boiler problem because I like working on them boilers, but being a system boiler, there's not often much to go wrong with it, especially if the heating is working. But we shall see. We'll get into that. I have no indication what it is yet. I believe there's a fault code on there. Or double G, you'll, I'm sure you'll see it. Yes, there is a fault code on there. So you'll see that right about now. So here we are at this ATAG and there is no hot water, no heating, nothing. And as you can see, the pump is throwing up some signs. So we're getting it start to run once you reset it. You get a little green swirly line on there and then it goes into exclamation mark where the pump is just dipping out. You can hear the relays there clicking like it's trying to get it fired and just not having none of it. So I would suspect this is a pump issue. Um, it's obviously getting power. It's just not working properly. So let's work a new one in. I have one on the van. Let's get it opened up. Can we just take a minute to admire how beautiful this knife is? It's from Kinetic Customs. Um, yeah, I love it, favorite. So we've got the pump here. This is on the Gen 2 version of the Economizer Combi Boiler, which is using the Grumfoss pump. There's the part number there. The Gen 3 version uses a Velo pump. So yeah, that's pretty much one of the only differences with that, with other than the kind of software side of things. But yeah, the Gen 2 uses a Grumfoss pump and the electrodes are slightly different, I believe. And the Gen 3 uses the Velo pump. A lot of manufacturers seem to be going that way, back to the Velo pumps now. I'm a fan, I've started using them as external pumps and really liking them. So just fill in the gap whilst you can see that I'm taking off the connections. They're a bit fiddly, but you know, nothing too bad. Pulling the PRV again to drain the pressure. Yes, I always take it off and clean it. No, I know a lot of you don't do it and drain it differently, but yeah, it's so easy. It's just under there and I will deal with the ramifications should there be any. Anyways, nice and easy, two connections on here. Just wipe the grips on. There's a bucket underneath there. Nice and easy to change, just like any pump, to be honest. So connections are on there. We will get the new rubber washers. You get two in the pack. Pretty much just like replacing any external pump. Just slightly easier because easier to drain. <laughs> Not having to worry about all the system issues. But yeah, nice straight swap. Put the connections back in the way they went. And that should be that. We'll whack that in and see if it works. There you go, that's the PRV being taken out and cleaned. Just giving the little body a little wipe down, make sure there's no debris on that. And I'll clean the head off as well before that goes back in. already sounding 10 times better as you can actually hear the pump running so that will now be circulating and alleviate any issues we had success
So there we have it, pump fault on that one. And I will try to get hold of those little icons on the pump mean something. I'm gonna hazard a guess that a exclamation mark with a triangle in red means that pump's faulty and the green swirly line means it's working okay. But I think there is a document explaining the different symbols and whatnot. So I will try to get that. If I can get it, then I'll put it at the end of this section of the video before the outro. And hopefully that is on there before the video goes up. Uh, not much else to say on there. Still good boilers. Really weird as that was only a few months old, the boiler. But, you know, stranger things have happened. You always get one that's knocked on the conveyor belt. That's it. Uh, talking of... Viper, this is not a paid ad. I do not get paid from them, but it's a really useful app to have. You can have books or the app. It's just useful, especially for the self-employed people to have that to be able to reference to. I really like it as well when you're explaining an at-risk or ID situation to a customer, you can show it to them. They can see, you know, what you're talking about. You can explain it. You can refer directly and it promotes a bit of trust as well. But also none of us know everything. Um, so it's nice to be able to refer back, especially when you're self-employed. We don't have people to turn to. We don't have line managers and things like that. So, yeah, that's always useful to be able to have that guide there. It stays updated. It's really well priced. Um, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really. So go and get Viper Gas. Speak to Aaron. He's a really nice guy there. Um, puts a lot of time and effort into the app and also is very supportive of engineers uh, really really supportive of, of apprentices um speaks highly of them and is really keen to bring on the rest of the industry and the new people coming into the industry while still supporting us oldies in the industry so yeah go get viper app and books whichever one you want but like subscribe comment great to engage with you all thanks for watching Ooh.